I just laughed so much last night. I actually sat here with a glass of red wine. Um, sat here and I watched the debate. I, I you know, we, we tried to do a little coverage with Progressive Army um, through our blog. And then, you know, Ben did coverage last night. So I won't drone on too much about it. But at the same time, I really do think that there, there are several instances. Um, there, there's a lot of problems. We got a lot of problems. And it's not just the fact that we have people like Howard Dean you know, spending their day accusing Donald Trump of being a cokehead. Um, we got a lot of problems. <laughs> like, there's a lot wrong with this election cycle. It is, it is like one of those mocking. I feel like we're living a mockumentary, right? You know, shout out to uh, Modern Family for 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 coining the term. They probably didn't coin the term, but that's the the most famous mockumentary I can take think about. I really feel like this presidential election cycle has been a mockumentary. Um, about an election gone wrong, like Wag the Dog or, or, or some ridiculous movie. Um, and, and last night's debate, you know, there were points where, not points, Trump just sounded like a babbling damn idiot half the time. He had some moments of lucidity, right? Um, particularly, you know, there, there were points where Hillary Clinton just left herself open for attack, and that's that hubris. You know, to walk into, you know, commentary about NAFTA, NAFTA, I mean, to say, you know, NAFTA wasn't bad. I mean, and you know, the way she left certain questions, it seemed almost like, you know, I had to go back and look at the transcript. I'm like, did she just concede a point? Did she just, did she just say NAFTA wasn't that bad? Like there were, there were issues. And then of course, you know, the TPP, she's been hedging on that a whole lot. You know, we've seen different people say different things, particularly we most recently have seen Bill Clinton say, you know, it, it makes sense you know, president supports it, blah, blah, blah. There are signs that she will go ahead and support it if she is president. But honestly, Trump is such a wild card. You don't know what the hell, he probably doesn't even know what the hell he's doing from moment to moment. So who's to say that if he was president, he wouldn't support it too. I mean, he says one thing, but he does the opposite. Like he talks a lot about crooked politicians and people, you know, paying money and pay for play and stuff like that because he wants to ding his opponent. But he himself has done that same exact thing. You know, last week um, I did a podcast with one of our viewers, shout out to Dakota Schmidt, um, who, who who writes, you know, Big Ten basketball, who, who, Big Ten. Um, but we talked about, you know, Dakota's from, from Wisconsin. We talked about the John Doe papers that came out, um, The Guardian. The Guardian has some really hard-hitting investigative journalism time. You know, The Guardian, um, a writer with The Guardian broke that um, the home and square t- story wide open uh, out in Chicago, um, I believe it might. I don't know if it's. I don't think it's the same writer, but but similar circumstances in terms of Laquan McDonald, you know, video cover up. Um, you had some, some some folks did the same thing in terms of the John Doe files in Wisconsin, and it was an investigation with several prosecutors involved. And actually, the case is pending. Um, SCOTUS is trying is waiting. They're waiting to determine whether or not they're going to grant cert. Grant and cert means whether or not they're going to hear the case or not. So, um, but, but basically what happened was they were investigating the, basically the dark money that was being funneled. This is that post-Citizen United world that Bernie Sanders and others have been talking, you know, Zephyr Teachout, other people have been talking so much about, you know, you have some third party that's un, that's unregulated, that's not responsible to anyone. And you can just donate money and funnel money and do whatever. And then that money gets, gets somehow not you know, funnel, but, but spent on behalf of candidates. And when they were, they were talking about how is Scott Walker, current Wisconsin governor, who is also Donald Trump's debate partner, apparently. Um, but Scott Walker, um, you know, and his, his, it was, I forget what it's called, was Wisconsin Action Fund or something, something similar like that. But basically how they went all around the country getting money from all the rich of the rich, you know, Carl Icahn, um, the, the, the CEO of Menards, just all these different people, Donald Trump, to donate for that recall effort that we saw in 2011 and how, and how this is an example of how money, how even with the best organizing, when you have that unchecked, unfettered dollar access going into elections, it can tip the scale, you know, it can untip the scale against the people. Um, and it j- didn't just benefit you know, uh, uh, Scott Walker, it benefited a whole host of down ballot Republicans that were facing similar situations in terms of the, the recall. So, um, you know, Donald Trump talks out of both sides of his mouth, he says a whole bunch of stuff. 
um, is Donald Trump a racist? I really have no clue. I mean, there are quite a few people out there who are, you know, acting like they're, 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 they're you know, the, the, the patron saint of the NAACP, but we see Sterling was a prime example in LA, right? Um, you know, Sterling was even given an award by the by the NAACP, and yet he would let off a tirade, you know, make your grandma cover her ears. So, you know, there's a difference. There are people who know how to behave themselves in public, and they can put on the show for the sake of getting along. They get along to get along to get along. You know what I'm saying? And then there are people like Donald Trump who just run their damn mouth and do and say whatever. And actually, because of the where he's at, he's getting along to get along too. He's doing what works for the base that has already existed within the Republican Party. And so when people talk about, oh, you know, this election has normalized white supremacy, America normalized white supremacy. White supremacy was normalized at the inception of this country. Does that mean that by saying that, that all white people are bad? No, of course not. But at the same time, there's been a system of racialized oppression that has been instituted in this country at its inception. It's codified. It, it is written into the Constitution itself, which is a living, breathing document. We can add on all these other amendments and statements and flowery, whatever. But that logic, especially when you look 200 some odd years down the line at Supreme Court cases in terms of police um, cases involving police and, and, and the rationale and legitimacy legitimacy that that certain Supreme Court justices will give to allow police officers to just outright discriminate because it's all in in fair and love and war and criminal procedure. I mean, we got a lot, a lot that's going, there's a lot going on. And so there was a lot that was missed. You know, I I was waiting for the portion last night when they were going to talk about race. And Hillary Clinton has very well rehearsed talking points about race, but that is all they are until we see better are talking points. She had, they have been very carefully crafted. They have been very carefully worded. She says the right stuff. Just like, you know, she knows, okay, it's great that private prisons are going, but remember last fall, she was being protested and interrupted for having uh, money bundlers that were investing in private prisons. Like, right, this is just, this is not even a whole year ago. So, I mean, she has been pushed to the point where she's at. Now, whether or not she actually follows through and does anything is a whole nother story. But here's the thing. It's not enough to just say you have to do something. We have to be very clear of what language should be used. While everyone, I love Ben, but Ben included, is pulling apart Donald Trump on this whole stop and frisk BS. That's what it is, is BS. You know, because like, 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 like Giuliani, and, and, and this is not an incorrect statement, stop and frisk right? Some variation, it may not be called that other places, but some variation of it, it happens and it's permitted to happen. It, it does happen. So, so let's stop pretending like we live in some great world where our civil liberties are intact and somehow Donald Trump is going to come in and make them go away. It already does happen. Like I don't agree with Giuliani. I don't agree with the policy and the practice because it still even happens in New York. It does not happen anywhere near the level that it happened. I think like what, 2011 or whatever was like the high point of stop and frisk in New York, but it does happen. The practice itself was never declared illegal. What was declared unconstitutional was the way in which it was used in targeting black and Latino predominantly men in New York City. That is the part that was considered unconstitutional. The stopping people itself, that's a whole nother conversation. So this whole fear of what Donald Trump is going to do and stop and frisk and he's going to do this, they or the police already do it. That is why we have these issues with extrajudicial murders. Police already got unchecked behavior. Donald Trump is not going to come in and do anything extra that's not already happening. We need to, we need to stop with these rosy liberal blinders and look at the real world and what's going on. This is why Hillary Clinton's conversation on this topic, her her points about um, respect the law and the law res- respect you. Huh? Philando Castile was doing what he was supposed to do, being respectful, did not do anything wrong, but he should have been respectful. Like this respectability thing, like having respect be some litmus test to whether or not someone will get killed is is asinine. Because the issue is not that you didn't respect someone, therefore you get killed. 
that's not that that that's not legally sufficient. That's not justifiable. It should not be justifiable because cops do not have the right to just shoot and kill people because they weren't listening. Can I just beat the dog mess out of my kid because they weren't listening? No. One of you might call the people on me and my kids will get taken away. I might lose my bar license over some nonsense like that. We all have repercussions. We all have consequences. Except when we come to cops because she's trying to get that cop vote. Now, see, she wasn't going to go after the Fraternal Order of order Police directly because we've already seen how inflammatory they have been. But she's still going to try and get that cop vote. So you got you got to you got to talk you, you got to talk law and order without being on stage saying law and order I am the law dude this ain't Judge Dredd like like I'm listening to Donald Trump right talk and I'm like this is like a bad you know 80s early 90s B movie this is like a Sylvester Stallone movie or something like I am the law like come on dude this is not Judge Dredd like you are a buffoon and honest, I'm gonna be honest with everybody like we can say like Hillary's a disaster Hillary's this Hillary's that. But Donald Trump's incompetence and buffoonery, it really, it, it, this is peak white privilege on that stage last night. It absolutely boggles my mind. And as great as Hillary Clinton is supposed to be, the fact that she is barely scratching the surface against him should scare the bejesus out of people who support her. And don't call me up like, well, no, you know, you should use your voice. No, nah, I'm not using my voice to advocate for anybody. You know who I might advocate for? Gloria Lariva. I, th- I got to be on the phone with her last night. That sister is bad. Ooh, I had to email her and see if I can get her on the show. Like, I understand when people get worried about whether or not Donald Trump is going to get in because people are not voting for Hillary Clinton, right? I-, I understand why in your mind that makes sense. But we're never, ever, ever going to break this cycle if we keep repeating the same damn thing over and over again. It's broken. We not going to fix it this way. It's not going to happen. Like for real, they both got a similar position towards Israel. Okay. So neither one of them give a damn about Palestinians that came across last night. They both agree that the terrorist watch list should be used to deny people access to guns. We've already litigated that issue. We've already been through why that's a horrible practice and policy. And they both seem to think talking about gun control and criminality is 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 a is proper in conversations about extrajudicial police murders. It's absolutely not. It doesn't have any place in that conversation. And Nina Turner had a brilliant tweet. It sums up perfectly what I was feeling watching this because they talked about because when, when the topic of race comes up and all they talked about was crime and criminal justice. You know, Hillary tried to throw in there like, oh, the proud black people who sing their songs and go to their churches and have their businesses. <sighs> really? I need you to stop trying to paint black America as if it's some pinnacle of virtue and awesomeness and perfection. Because there's a lot wrong. There's a lot that needs to be done. And you, my dear, are not our patron saint. It's not happening. Donald Trump looked like a damn idiot talking about, well, I know what the African Americans want, and they're happy that I challenged Obama. My dude, who are you talking to? Like, seriously, why, why? Who do you even talk to? There's actually a sister, I wrote her name down. Um, she was on uh, Child to, to Stella Harrington. Um, she shared a post, a clip of this woman who is the head of Trump's like diversity council or something like that. Black woman out in Chicago. Um, there may not be a lot of them, but there are, we, we heard a sister that called in the Ben show last night. Um, there may not be a lot of them, but there are black people who are seeing him as a viable option with the sister. With, with, with someone else was saying, I saw another face. I saw someone else on Facebook who openly said they were supporting Trump because they weren't going to support her. And they don't, they didn't really care about the housing lawsuit issue. That was like 40, you know, 40 some odd years ago. Um, I can understand that. Like I said, um, talking about the get down, when you look at the get down, you know, one of the things that's happening, you know, like I said, South Bronx was burnt out. I, rem- I remember that to, to not like, again, not the same extent, but I remember buildings being burnt out as a kid. Um, and, and, you know, wealthy land, that's what they did because they wanted to get, they wanted the fastest way to empty out a building. It, actually, it was even on the episode of SVU, they had someone because he was a torch. That's what they called him. 
the, he said the fastest way to empty out a building if you want to do something with it is to set it on fire. Because not only do you get out all, you, you get rid of the people that you, the undesirables, the people that you don't want in there, then you get that insurance money and you get to rebuild and do something else and you can raise the rent. It's unfortunate, but that's what happened. And we can't ignore and act like, you know, our communities, and it's not just black communities or Latino communities, you know, low income, impoverished communities, period, across America have been decimated in this manner by wealthy landowners, by corporate interests. And we need to stop pretending like, you know, Hillary Clinton is sitting on some Mount High because she did something when she was in law school that she didn't turn around and do consistently once she graduated and got a job. You know, there are those of us that, yeah, we get our one little public interest job, we save the world for that one summer or two, and then we go on to the corporate world and never look back. She's looked back and she's done stuff to advance a political career. But, I mean, she ain't, she ain't no activist. She ain't no ride or die. Let, let's, let's, let's not get that all, let's not get it twisted. And some people say, well, I don't need that. I just need to defeat Trump. Okay, but let's look at what are you defeating and what are you getting in, in, in return? Because someone that takes money from corporations, you know, she was real stern and admonished in Wells Fargo, but don't she take money from them? I mean, Bank of America was had has had class action lawsuits and stuff against it for discriminating. Hasn't she taken money from them? I mean, like seriously, you know, people can say like, well, you know, you need money to run elections and this, that, and the other. But at the same time, we need people to be accountable. If you claim that you have these values, if you claim that you have this respect for people and progress and, and ending discrimination, you know, I, she, institutional racism, she said she was going to talk to white people. Did she talk to white people last night? I don't think so. I mean, that whole issue about race was completely one-sided and it seemed to put the onus only on black people as if it's somehow absolutely 100% our fault that the situations are the way they are. At no point did she ever say that cops need to be held accountable for their actions. She never does. Even when she was debating against Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders said it. Like someone pointed out earlier, she couldn't even say the names of people murdered in Tulsa, in Charlotte, in D.C. She couldn't even say that. She probably don't even remember no more, right? Because she don't have the mothers of the movement traveling with her, coaching her, making sure she remembers their kids' names. Like, 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 like she could name, list off the cities, but not who the people are. They're people who have lost their life unjustly. Even if you committed a crime, if it was not a situation that required lethal force to be used, it is a problem. Why? Because we have process and procedure that is supposed to be followed. We talk about the sanctity of this, this democracy. We talk about that damn flag people so upset about because folks don't want to say the pledge, but then nobody wants to protect what all that's supposed to be standing for. You hear me? You with me tonight? So the presidential debate was 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 fascinating. Like I thought, one of the things I thought that she did well, I'll say something positive. I'll be positive. I thought one thing that she did well was I thought it was very relatable when she talked about her dad. But like Arami, the funky academic, pointed out, it was kind of condescending when she pointed out, well, my daddy never had bankruptcies because a lot of small business owners, it's it's not easy being a small business owner in America. It is a very tough. You know, small businesses make, make the world go around. Shout out to small business owners. They do a lot of really great work. They employ people um, and, and they provide value to our communities. But it's not easy. And there's nothing wrong with needing to take advantage of the bankruptcies. However, in Trump's case, Trump's an asshole. There's a lot wrong with it. <laughs> He's a jerk. He's a buffoon. I don't know what to say. Um, yeah, like like his whole commentary, everything he had to say, but am I concerned? Am I so worried that somehow Trump... See, this is the other thing I need people to understand about how federalism works, right? Trump can't just institute some national stop and frisk law. Like, he can't do that. If you believe that he can do that, then you need to ask why President Obama can't institute national laws to govern all the police to not do what they've been doing. You know, people are so focused on what Trump is going to do or not do or what Hillary's going to do and not do. Are you paying attention to the attempts for like Blue Lives Matter laws, for example, happening at the local level in your community? Because a lot of this stuff that is affecting us, a lot of the things, the issues, we see Charlotte, we see Chicago, we see it's common for cops to disable their cameras or to not enable them at all. The presidential debate, there was a lot, it was, it was wanting. 
but it did not cover very pertinent topics. Like I said, the, 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 the topic of race was totally not addressed as Nina Turner. I'm with Nina. If I'm with any of her, it is Nina and Pramila and Zephyr. You know what I'm saying? There are several hers that I'm with. Um, and, and Nina is definitely at the top of that list. Um, yeah, so so stay tuned and check out because we have more to come. Benjamin Dixon show is coming up next. But Nina Turner, she had a she had a tweet and it was just basically like there was no conversation about poverty, about education, about housing, infrastructure development. She listed off all these things that were completely left out of the conversation. They were too busy taking digs and jabs at each other, you know, to talk to the American people. They kind of talked to you a little bit. It's kind of talked around you. They talked over you. They talked through you. But they was they were they were too busy trying to like one up each other versus actually put something meaningful on the table, and and that's a real problem. I mean that's a real problem. Like it's very sad. It's very depressing watching this election cycle. I mean you know this this moral imperative to quote unquote win. I mean what are you winning? What what are you winning exactly? You know. Um, but yeah, Nina Nina Turner she. She's brilliant. I mean, she's just brilliant. Like I, she, she's, she's been on the news recently. Um, she has talked about um, being being a mother of a black police officer, and and still, you know, the concerns and stuff about his safety, and not necessarily from that Blue Lives Matter standpoint, but just from the safety that she's still the mother of a black man in America. Um, there's some old stories circling, but there there have been many instances where where and I think a couple between Chicago and New York, there have been a couple instances where white cops have shot and killed off duty black cops because they didn't realize they were police officers. Like, and those cases don't get, don't get justice, justice either. Um, but it's, 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 and this is why the interest and the intricacies, the depth of this, this topic and conversation is why I'm not very impressed with TI's video. Um, if you haven't got checked check, check out Warzone, good song, but I think the concept behind the video, making everybody black, white, vice versa, it doesn't send the message home the same way to the people who really need to get the message. Um, but there's a lot, there was a lot left out. You know, there was no discussion of abortion. Um, they talked about, you know, the middle class and taxes, but 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 we don't even have a middle class anymore as once was. And what the hell is Hillary's debt-free college stuff she keeps talking about? Like, abortion was not discussed at all. You know, choice is under attack. I know when Umar said, you know, Hillary, there, that, that, that is one area where people, would, where, where people would have some concern. And we're talking about, you know, but we need to talk about or, abortion, not just in terms of access to getting the abortion itself, but it is a social justice. It is economic. It's a health issue. It, it encompasses so many different areas, and we need to have a more broad race really need to have a reproductive justice way of talking about abortion and other health. We didn't talk about health care. I mean, there was so much that, that needs to be talked about that was not talked about. So anyway, um, I am wrapping up. I'm getting off. I will be back, apparently, because Ben has summoned me for the big show. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, you know, give what you can, do what you can. Check me out, patreon.com, The Way of Fanoa. Check out the website. I always have other podcasts, two other podcasts at least up a week. Um, and, and there's more to come. We're, we are working, we're building, we're growing and talk to you guys later. Peace.